The hair is here. Mike Clevenger, one of the best pitchers in minor league baseball in studio tonight. Clevenger spent time with the Cleveland Indians last year, and if he keeps throwing the ball the way he has so far this season, he'll be back in Cleveland before you know it. And with that, we say hello. Welcome to Wall-to-Wall -Wall Sports delivered by Donato's. I'm Dave Holmes. And I'm Kayla Anderson. We have a great show for you tonight, but Mike Clevenger isn't the only guest in the house. Special thanks to Donato's for bringing in pizza for the crew. Donato's, every piece is important. And now we bring in Mike Clevenger, current Columbus Clipper, former Cleveland Indian, and future Cleveland Indian. Yes. Mike, we're going to play a game here called Wall of Ten. Here's how it works. There are ten topics on this board, okay? Some are baseball, some are just flat out weird. I see you scoping it out uh, now, yeah. trying to see what you can do here. We know what you can do with your arm. It's time to pick your brain, okay? Sound good? Sound good. All right, Kayla is here to help you I'm out, so help. she's not going to let anything get off the nope. rails here. Let's start with I-71. Off to a hot start this season. How do you not think about getting that call up? How do you block that out? I mean, it's, it's just all part of development, and the more you think about that, I feel like it's, it's going to take you off, you know, what the prize is, and the prize is playing in October, and, I, and that's where you want to be. That's where I want to be. When did you start to, to learn that? Because you've obviously, you've, you've been with the Angels organization, you've had some setbacks, you've come into this organization, you've climbed your way up. How is it, how did you learn at that point? Like, you can't think ahead. Uh, I mean, this kind of just learned from experiences. You kind of got to fail at that first, and then you kind of realize what happens when you just mentally, it just mentally weighs you down and destroys you, and then that translates physically. Mm -hmm. See, I, I'm too insecure. I always wait for the wheels to fall off, so I, I would be paranoid all the time. That's one reason I wouldn't be a good player. Fall Classic, you just mentioned October. You were a mm -hmm. part of that historic World Series last year, Indians and the Cubs. Do you have a moment or a memory, something that just made you say, wow? I mean, a funny one wasn't even in the game. It was uh, me and Cody Anderson. We were out in right field at Wrigley, and we were playing hacky sack, our usual routine yeah. for every game. <laughs> we were just playing for a while. Then, we, like, Cody just looked up, and he was like, you realize we're playing hacky sack in game six <laughs> of the World Series, before the World Series? And at I was Wrigley. Like, and then it just took us in for like a minute. We just were silent and just sat there with the hacky sack and then went back to playing. It's funny because I covered the Cleveland Indians in the World Series this yeah. year. And I remember talking to you at Wrigley before the game. And you guys were just about to go out and play hacky sack, I think. Yeah. And it's just crazy to, to, to be in that environment like the, for the first time. Um, just to cover it, I can't imagine as a player. Did it almost go by so quickly just because it was the first time experiencing it? Yeah, I mean, it, to look back, it almost feels like it was just fast-forwarded the whole time. It yeah. just, it's mean, like you just wish you could relish it a little bit more, right? So I got to get back. And you got to get back there. And as a Florida guy, did you get a sense of how big it was to Northeast Ohio for those long-suffering mm -hmm. fans? I mean, did you oh. feel that? <laughs> yes, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we definitely felt the stakes and how high they were at yeah. the time. Yeah, unbelievable series. All right, father figure, when you spent time in Cleveland, is there a guy, maybe an older guy, you looked to as a mentor, a friend, someone that kind of took you under his wing? I mean... I always picked Andrew Miller's brain, and he always yeah. he always picked my brain back too. Huh. So that I always always enjoyed those convos, and it was always. Uh, I mean, he used to be a starter. He he kind of did the same thing, bouncing back and forth when he first came up. So there's a lot of things to learn from him. And then uh, Kluber and Tomlin, if you just watch those guys work, that's that's all you need to do. Watch their presence, their composure, and the way they go about their business, and you can learn enough from right there. How are the personalities? with that pitching staff up there. Are you guys all super different? Yes. yes. I thought, that's kind of <laughs> yeah. the vibe that I got. It's uh, not, I, I wouldn't say one of us is alike. Wow. <laughs> yeah, Andrew Miller's not a bad guy to, to no, learn from. No, not at all. He's also known for some facial hair, not quite, <laughs> not quite yours. We'll get that in a minute, actually. In style, okay, when we see guys show up to an NBA game, they're in the different style, an mm -hmm. NFL game, they're in the suit and tie. Baseball guys have their own style. How would you describe Mike Clevenger's style? Ooh. I'll say free. I'll say just me. I don't think <laughs> there's a sp like specific way I'm going, but what's comfortable, what I like, what's different. Yeah. Well, I do want to um, point out if we can take a shot of his shoes because <laughs> this is like every athlete that I run into, I, yeah. I end up finding that they love these Cole Hans, and it's because they're stylish, but what? They're comfortable because they were made by Nike at one point, weren't they? Nike soles, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So they, they look sharp, but they are comfortable. Yes. And comfort matters. It does. I know for Clev. It, it does to Mike. Okay, now I, I referenced this. Rinse and repeat. You know where we're going here. This is probably the number one question you get. Yeah. Here. A hair like that, okay, doesn't come without a story. So <laughs> give me the story <laughs> behind these locks. Where does this come from? I mean, I... Oh gosh, even the, I have a picture in an Indian's uniform when I was seven with long, like, hair down to my shoulders. And, uh, I've had it on and off my whole life. I think it's just the, 
I grew up in like the skateboarding that's lifestyle, right. yeah. and that's like all I did when I grew up. That was my man. baseball was like my hobby. Skateboarding was my job when I was like uh, coming through middle school, and uh, I think it's kind of where it originated. But you actually had no hair at one point. I, yeah. What, I went, what's, what did that all happen? How did that uh, all happen? That was with a decision to go to the Citadel yes. out of high school, and <laughs> I did not. I knew that my long, long hair wasn't going to stay, but I did not know you were. Uh, bu you're actually called a knob because you look like a doorknob. You had a no <laughs> guard. You had to no guard shave your hair uh, once a week, and if you didn't, you got demerits wow. and punishments where there is a tour or confinement. Wow, it probably felt liberating just growing your hair back. Well, see, so, you know, like, yes. yes. And, and that's something, I don't know if you talked to Andrew Miller about it, the Yankees, yeah, some of these teams are real dead serious clean, about the way they have to keep cut. a group. Yep. Mm -hmm. They let you do and, what you and want. he yep. let it go the second he came over here. It's like he got <laughs> three out of the cage. I called it, too. Did I not call it? I said, Andrew Miller's going to grow out his beard. She said the day they announced the trade, she yep. said, well, get ready, he's going he's gonna to come back to that. All right, superstition. I know a lot of players, pitchers especially, are superstitious. Is there anything you do on the day you take the hill that's a little bit weird? Weird? I don't know about weird. I mean, I do, before I go out, I always fold, I like to fold my towel, put my water bottles in the same spot. Wow. I rub my hat on my number, because also my daughter's birthday. Hit the top of the dugout with the hat and put it on, and that's every, before every inning. So oh, really? And I skip, I jump over the line, and yes. I have to, I have to <laughs> pop the ball up to my hand cleanly before I go to the mound. That's, Okay. So I guess it is so, weird. I'll take I, that back. The really more he said it, he's like, you know, this know, does sound right? a little weird now. I was like, it he was like, uh, I don't really think I do. And then he like described 16 things. Is there anything weird that you've seen like a teammate do that's like super But you say, come on, that's a bit much then. Yeah. Uh, no, I kind of like superstitions though. So I can't, yeah. I, I don't think there's any too much. I mean, we had uh, like the Joe Locker set up the whole, the whole season last year. Mm -hmm. So. I don't think there's any superstition that's over that's the top. That's baseball, right? Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, that's one of the cool things about baseball. Okay. Clevenger Idol, relax. We're not going to make you sing here. That's not where we're going. <laughs> when you grew up, was there a pitcher that you idolized and said, that's the game I want for me? Mm -hmm. Oh, there's a couple. Uh, Pedro Martinez was a huge one. Like, I loved watching him throw, like, his power change up. But uh, uh, Francisco Rodriguez, actually, he's still, still in the game. But yeah. I actually mimicked his mechanics coming up, and that's kind of how I got the wild mechanics when I was like, I think I was 13 when I started trying to throw like him because I saw how much he was using his body and yeah. I just mm -hmm. wanted to do that. Did you always want to pitch when it came to baseball? No. no. Pitching, didn't. I mean, I always wanted to just, I wanted to play every day. Sure. So I was a short, I was a third baseman in college and then wow. closed and then became like a pitcher only once I got into professional baseball. Well, it turned out well for you. Yeah, you're doing okay. Jeez. How is that mindset different though? I mean, when you're only going out there yeah. every five days, I mean, how do you, what do you do on, to keep yourself regimented and, and feel like you're still staying fresh? I mean, there's, there's a ton of, I mean, you have to listen to your body. So, I mean, you're kind of, mm -hmm. you're. Regiment changes week to week, depending mm -hmm. on what's barking, what's not, what's feeling good. And, uh, but I would say just like uh, staying mentally grounded, like the mental part of it, waiting five days, that's the worst. Yeah. Especially if you had a rough one, you got roughed up and you just right. want to be out there, you can't, you can't just go, you got to wait five days. Yeah. And that's, I would say that's the toughest part of starting. Yeah, I've always heard NFL players say that's the worst part about the NFL is that full that week. Wait, yeah. When you lose a game, you want to go right now. Okay, baby, baby here. Again, this is not a Justin Bieber reference. <laughs> you recently had your second daughter. Yep. How much different does life get with two yeah. instead of one? <laughs> um, everything seems a lot, a lot higher intensity, a lot, a lot more on the line. But uh, I don't know. I, I wasn't. You wouldn't have told me I had two girls last year, and mm -hmm. yeah. but I mean, it's changed me for the better. I mean, it's uh, that's kind of kept me grounded and humbled, and I mean, it's just especially being away from them right now, yeah. and then. Yeah. Knowing the sacrifices we made that my parents, like looking at sacrifice my parents made for being away from me when I was younger and stuff like that. And it's, it's been awesome. That's I remember cool. you told me something last year. You said, I'm not out there just pitching for me now. I'm out there pitching for, at the time it was your daughters. Now mm. it's your daughters. daughters that was yes. probably one of my favorite things I've ever heard somebody say. I mean, mm -hmm. why is that so important? Well, I mean, because as much as this is a game, this is also a lot of guys' livelihoods. I yeah. mean, this is how I'm, I want to send my girls to school. This is how I want to provide a good lifestyle for them. And, uh, so that's why it's more than just me now. Oh, I mean, do you ever think, I mean, Mike, do you need to just go out for wings or something, have a guy's night? I mean, now that you have all these <laughs> ladies at home, I mean, I mean, do you say, where are the boys at every now and then? Oh, yeah. When we go, when we go on the road, I always, we always go have some team dinners. Okay. It's, it's always a place. <laughs> you need that time. Okay. Hot spot. You've had some time here in Columbus. They're known for great restaurants, places mm -hmm. to go. Do you have a favorite place to go in Columbus? Uh, it's my starting routine. Like before every start, I go to Brassica, which is my favorite, like one of my yeah. favorite lunch spots uh -huh. ever, and then Native for the juices. And those are my two go-tos almost every day. 
<laughs> I, he, at it's first funny. he said we don't have superstitions, but now he's starting to look back. He goes, actually, yeah. maybe, maybe I do a it's, little it's bit. It's routine. It's routine. Actually, you brought because you brought in a native thing, and I was mm. like, I totally go there for that. And brassica. They have like the coolest mixtures of things you could kind of like mix up what you want. Right. But there's so many great restaurants in here. Has Columbus been a, a great spot for you to be? Yeah, I mean, I I love Columbus. Mm -hmm. I've never had a the bad experience here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Whether it's people, restaurant, there's always new food. There's always a different event. So I've always had a lot a really good time here. Yeah, I've always said for guys in their 20s and 30s. I mean, you grew up in Florida. What were you expecting Ohio to be like, yeah. and how different has it been? Cool. Yeah, I didn't know I didn't know anything about <laughs> yeah. Ohio before Farmland. this. Yeah. I mean, I was expecting it to be a lot. I mean, I've been to Cedar Rapids, Iowa, so I played there. So okay. I was like expecting yeah. it to be a lot of farmland, rural, yeah. with like really tiny. I wasn't expecting this. Yeah. No, it's it's a good area. It's a very good area. Okay. Last one here, doppelganger. Mm -hmm. mm. You have a very unique look. Do you ever get mistaken <laughs> for another celebrity? Oh yeah. Oh gosh, I'm uh, waiting for this. Who is it? Because I have one in my head, and I want to know if it matches. That's why I'm asking the question. <laughs> well, I mean. Mitchie from uh, Days and Confused always get oh, yes. Oh yeah. That's one. Okay. And Taylor Hansen. That's the one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's the <laughs> one. <laughs> now, yes. Are you okay? Which one? Did either of those bother you? Are you okay with those? Uh, I mean, Days and Confused is one of my favorite movies. Okay. Well. I was going to say, that's got to really be like it. one that you enjoy. Yes, um, we were trying to actually, we were going through your Twitter last night. Yes. We were trying to throw out one that you wouldn't know, like a question that would be totally random. Okay. That was about as close as we could get, though. Yeah, I mean, if anyone gives you grief that. about the Hansen brothers, I mean, I lived on that in 97. I mean, yeah. that's a great track. I don't care. But you, what is your <laughs> genre of music? It's great hair. They had great hair. What is your genre of music? I like, I like a little bit of everything. You do? But I mean, uh, I would say not to, too much electronic, but okay. towards that range. Yeah, that's what, mm -hmm. I, I would get that. Kayla's no. straight out of Compton. You wouldn't, I am. You wouldn't like, know it. I'm like rap <laughs> R&B. Like, oh, I mean, yeah. It's crazy. I, I mean, I'm from Calvin Harris to all the way to Gucci Man to Luke Look Ryan. at that. I like, I this. like it. There we go. He's eclectic. Variation. Yeah. Well, Mike, thanks again. Best of luck in Columbus. I have a feeling you're headed to Cleveland yep. very soon. But we're not done here on Wall to Wall Sports delivered by Donato's. That's